Antwerp is a fascinating city, and it has a very special connection with infectious diseases. We have the red light district, <laughs> we have the seafarers, the harbor, the Institute of Tropical Medicine, the University of Antwerp, where infectious diseases is one of the top research areas. And those who know Antwerp and know the Flemish series Cordon, they know what an infectious disease outbreak means in a city like Antwerp. Now, I started many years ago as a general practitioner in Antwerp, very nearby in the 80s. At the moment of the AIDS epidemic in the US, in Europe, in Belgium, but also here in Antwerp. So I was fascinated by the disease, by the patients. How can we manage the disease? How can we try to prevent transmission? That was, of course, not evident at all. I was tremendously attracted by prevention, and in particular by immunization, by vaccines. Indeed, only vaccines have the capacity to control, eliminate and eradicate a disease. Last century was in fact a century of the smallpox eradication. This century, ladies and gentlemen, the 21st century will be the century of the polio eradication and perhaps also the eradication of some other vaccine preventable diseases. So when my team was invited to participate in an international collaboration to assist and help in the last steps of eradication of polio, we were sold. But what is polio? Well, polio is a highly infectious viral disease. It's a virus that is easily transmitted from person to person by contaminated sewage and water. And like other viruses, you have several strains. And very originally, they call them one, two, and three. Very easy to remember for my students. These viruses can be easily transmitted, and in particular, they will most commonly target the under five population in the low and middle income countries. They will attack the nervous system, and they will paralyze muscles, and in particular, the respiratory muscles, and you will suffocate and you will die. So in the early 20s, this was a devastating and very feared disease, not only in the low and middle income countries, but also in industrialized countries. And so whenever we had an epidemic here in Belgium, in 1952, in 1957, the whole society, all of you, would be busy with the management of just one disease. And you know this picture. The iron lung was invented in 1929, so 90 years ago, to assist, of course, these polio patients paralyzed at the level of their muscular, uh, respiratory muscles. So, in the 50s and in the 60s, two vaccines were developed. Of course, targeting polio 1, 2 and 3. An inactivated vaccine, so non-life vaccine that you offer with a syringe and a needle, you inject it, and an oral vaccine, but a live oral vaccine that you just offer through little droplets. And since 1985, up to today, we were able to bring down the number of worldwide cases from 350,000 per year to less than 100 per year. Isn't that amazing? In those 30 years, 3 billion children have been vaccinated. And more than 18 million people can walk who otherwise would have been paralyzed. But there is more good news. First of all, in 2015, the World Health Organization, you know these institutions, they were able to declare the eradication of type 2 globally. And very recently, a few weeks ago, the World Health Organization declared the eradication of type 3. Isn't that awesome? So, where are we now? That's the map of the world. Only type 1, while type 1 is circulating, and through massive immunization programs, we were able to bring that back to two countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan. And what we see on this map, of course, are the green spots as well. 
So each nice story so far has a but. The life-attenuated vaccine is composed of little life virus vaccine particles. So you swallow these particles, they will be in your bowel, they will multiply, and they end up in your stools. You leave a mark here in Antwerp. <laughs> what happens then? Well, in particular, in low- and middle-income countries where the background polio immunization rate is very low, you have a lot of susceptible small children. And these vaccine viruses in the environment can infect those small children, and these small children will, through contaminated water, swallow that vaccine virus. It will come in your bowl, it will go to your stools, and back to the environment. And after a number of cycles, these vaccine viruses will start to mutate, and they will become more potent, and they will cause polio. And what you see on these green spots are vaccine-derived polio cases. So that does not really fit in an eradication story. On the next slide, you should see that in the meantime, but also on the map you saw it, we have more of these vaccine-derived polio cases than the natural type 1 cases. So that's a bit weird. On top of that, the way to control these little epidemics of green spots, these little epidemics of vaccine-derived polio, we use massive oral polio immunization campaigns. Now, wait a minute. To control vaccine-derived polio epidemics, we use an oral vaccine that itself causes vaccine-derived polio. So we fight fire with fire. Yes, indeed, we fight fire with fire for the moment because we have no other tools. It's the only tool we have for the moment. So clearly we need to have another vaccine. A vaccine that is able to be distributed very easily, so oral droplets, it's very easy. But on the other, on the other hand, a vaccine that is stable, that does not mutate, that is less likely to mutate, that is genetically stable. So. That's the next step. How we, are we going to control these epidemics and to test these new vaccines? Because two of these vaccines have been developed in the meantime. And as most of these green spots are type 2 vaccine-derived polio cases, the new vaccines that are developed, oral attenuated live vaccines, target these type 2 polio cases. The question now is, how can we test such vaccines, given the context of the global eradication of type 2 in 2015 on the one hand, and on the other hand, you want to be sure that the volunteers that receive that vaccine, oral vaccine, goes in the bowl, will multiply, comes in the stools, that the stools will not come into the environment, that they don't leave a mark in Antwerp. To do that, you need extraordinary measures. So we started to build a very specific infrastructure, a container village, a quarantine container village. That was built here in Antwerp in less than three days and finalized in one month. So be my guest. I would like to invite you and you and you to come and be a volunteer, stay 28 days in this container village. I offer you very nice facilities, a private room, very nicely arranged. You will have little company of 14 cohabitants. You can do your homework, you can work from a distance, and of course you have a relaxation room, you can listen to music, read a book, you have a team of doctors and nurses that will assist you on a daily basis, maybe more than you want. You have a relaxation room and a fitness room with free entrance from morning till evening, even in the weekend. Your stools and blood samples will be analyzed on the spot. You have plenty of space to walk around. You have your privacy, of course, your own room, locked as you wish. And on top of all that, we will offer you Belgian haute cuisine in a very nicely arranged kitchen. 
So I'm sure you want to come. Okay, you accept my invitation, but you have to stay 28 days. So no one can leave before we are sure that they are not releasing any viral material in the environment. Now you will think those who accepted the invitation must be crazy. Who does something like that? Well, in the summer of 2017, we had twice 15 participants, twice 15 volunteers who accepted the invitation. These are the little heroes of a even more heroic chapter of the eradication of polio. So we had an architect, we had a plumber, we had a houseman, a housewife, we had a master student. They all had their own story, they all had their own activity to be there. Can you imagine? Would you be able to do that for 28 days? So they did so. We bled them on a weekly basis. We had stool samples on a daily basis. Everything was analyzed. This was the only way to generate the so needed data on safety of the vaccine, immunogenicity, so the ability, ability to trigger antibodies, and of course also to look at the shed virus in the stools. What is, how likely are they to mutate? How genetically stable are these vaccines? Well, finally, we looked at the data. They are of a high quality. The vaccine is safe. The vaccine does trigger high quality antibodies. And the vaccine is more genetically stable than what we are using for the moment to control these green spots. So this is really a fantastic, awesome story. Based on these data, we are able now to use this vaccine, still in a clinical trial, 2018, 2019, in larger populations in Belgium and in Panama. And at this very moment, ladies and gentlemen, the World Health Organization is looking at the data, analyzing the data, to take a decision early 2020 to use one of these two candidate vaccines to control these green spots. This is the first time in 60 years that the new polio vaccine has been developed and tested here in Antwerp. <laughs> now together, you and me, we can eradicate polio. We need not only researchers, facilities, vaccines, technology, we need volunteers like you. We need those little heroes to bring the science a step further and to finish the work. Thank you.